Hello everyone and welcome to another tutorial. This video is all about Node.js and it is an excellent framework to learn if you would like to become a full stack web developer as it kind of bridges a gap between front and back end development. We will cover setting up and installing dependencies, adding all the middlewares, running your first server, setting up MLab, setting up the configuration file for the database and adding cores. I would like to give a quick shout out to Arash and Adam who provided us with this content and they have even provided us with a limited number of free coupons to enroll in their Udemy course as you see here. I will include the links to the course as well as timestamps in the description of this video. So let's get started. Hello guys, I'm Arash, your beloved instructor for this course. In this course I will teach you how to build an Amazon clone using Node.js plus Angular. We will learn how to use these amazing technologies to build an amazing e-commerce platform like Amazon. You heard that right, Amazon. Have you ever wondered to build your own e-commerce platform like Amazon, but have no money or the technical skill to build it yourself? Rest assured, I got you covered. I'm building this course together with another awesome instructor, Adam Peterson. He will get you guys on the Angular part, while I'm going to get you guys on the Node.js part. The reason why I decided to build this course is because a lot of students have been asking me how to build an e-commerce platform like Amazon using Angular instead of the traditional jQuery. Today is your lucky day as I, Arash, will teach you how to build a complete Amazon clone together with Adam Peterson. If you guys have any question, you can ask at my email as arashnow at gmail.com or adampeterson.work at gmail.com. We will answer all your questions no matter what. So what are you guys waiting for? Start now and learn how to build your own Amazon. In the next video, we will learn how to set up Node.js and install all the required dependencies. Hello guys, welcome back. In order for us to build a full application with many features, we need to teach Node.js on how to learn a specific skill. For example, if we want to teach Node.js on how to create a URL, then we need to install Express Framework. If we want to teach Node.js on how to read JSON data, then we need to teach Node.js body parser. The more skills we teach Node.js, the more intelligent it becomes. In this video, we will install all the dependencies that Node.js needs right now. So what are you waiting for? Head to your PowerShell and install all the important dependencies. So click shift and right click and click open PowerShell window here. So the first thing we want to do is we want to create a folder. But before that, we need to install one specific library and we need to install Noteman. Noteman is a utility that will monitor for any changes in your code. To install Noteman, we run npm install noteman-g. So npm install noteman-g. Dash G stands for global, so that every Node.js project can use it. Done. So you want to clear everything. So we already installed a Noteman. Next thing we want to do is we want to create a new folder and give it a name Amazon. This will be our project folder. You can create it on desktop or whichever directory you are comfortable with. CD into this folder, CD Amazono, Amazono, and create another folder and give it a name server. So make directory server. For Node.js, we will work specifically in servers folder. So CD into server, and we want to install all the core dependencies for Node.js. Before that, we need to type in npm init. We want to initialize the package.json. So name version one, hello Amazon. Oops, I don't know what to type nowadays. 
gonna be server.js rush yes so everything installed so now we want to install all the important dependencies which will be npm install express body parser morgan mongoose dash dash safe instead of using dash g we want to use dash dash save to save all the dependencies only for the specific project which is server folder so we have installed every important dependency for the time being so in this video we learn how to create folders and install all the important dependencies in the next video we will we will learn how to use the dependencies and what each dependency does specifically in the last video we learn how to install dependencies using npm now we will learn how to use it in our code first of all you need to make sure you are in servers folder if you are then open up your favorite text editor my favorite text editor is visual studio so i'm going to click visual studio code and you want to drag the entire project folder which is amazono to your text editor now you want to click here and you want to right click on server and you want to click create a new file and you want to give it a name server js the next thing we need to do is to get all the dependencies that we just installed so let's go ahead and const Require is a function to get the dependencies. In other programming languages like Python or Ruby, you usually use import express. For example, import express or import Morgan. In a nutshell, require is like import. So let me remove this. So I'm going to explain to you guys what each of the dependency does. Express is a web framework you can create HTTP routes like get post or to be more specific URL it is a framework to create HTTP routes Morgan is HTTP request logger for you know node.js it is a middleware it simplifies the process of logging requests to your application next is body parser body parser is actually a data reader so technically if you don't install body parser Node.js cannot really communicate with the front-end data. For example, if you want to log in and you want to pass in your username and password, Node.js has to understand what kind of data is that to be able to do something with it. Finally, is Mongoose. Mongoose is a MongoDB agent. So now you can communicate directly from Node.js to the MongoDB database with an easy-to-use user interface. You will see the power of, of Mongoose later on. Now, we need to teach our Node.js on how to use all these dependencies. To do so, we need to create an instance of express dependency. So let's go ahead and do that. Cons app equals to express. Once created, now we can use it. So app.use body parser json app.use and we close this. See it? First line is simply reading data in a specific format, which is JSON format. Second line is URL encoded is we put it as false because in future we want to read an image as well it can read all sort of data types finally is morgan which will lock out all the requests on the terminal i know right now it is very subjective but as we dive in more you will understand why do we need all these dependencies in this video we will learn 
I mean, sorry, in this video, we learn how to import the dependencies. In the next video, we will run our first server. I'll see you guys in the next video. In order for people to use your app, you need to run the server first. In this video, we will learn on how to run our first server and our first HTTP route or in another name, API. So let's go ahead and do that. So right below here, you want to type in add listen. You want to listen to port 3030. Let's run our Node.js application. So I'm going to open up my PowerShell. So here, I'm going to cd to Amazon and cd to server. And I'm going to type a Nodeman. So if you use only Node, whenever you make any changes to your code, it will never restart the server by itself. But let's cancel this. If you do Nodeman, Okay, now we have this problem. The term Nodeman is not recognized as the name of the command lat function, script file, or operable program. So we have this, we called it path problem. So you need to verify whether your path is correct or not. So let's go to here and you want to type in this PC, right click properties, and then you want to go to advanced okay, to password. And then you want to click environment variables and then path edit and then you want to add new and then this is what you're going to type in all right this one app data and then npm all right and then you add to your path so then only you can use notman okay all right so you want to go back here you want to exit and then you want to go back to your PowerShell cd to amazon cd to server okay clear everything and then you want to type in notman server and now it runs perfectly so it will restart you know whenever you make any change to the code so for example if you go to your code and you add um 30, 30, 80, you save it and then it automatically restarts awesome so let's go back to our Visual studio and remove this Congratulations on building your first server. Now it runs magic happens on port 3030. Really proud of you guys. I have a feeling that one of you guys are going to change the world soon, huh? <laughs> I know you guys are going to change the world soon enough. One of you guys. So now let's move on. Next step is to create our first HTTP route. So let's go ahead and do that. So in the middle of here, type in app and get. Response. Save this and then we want to test this route. Okay, so let's go ahead and go to our Google Chrome and type in localhost 3030. It will show user Arash Yahya. So Technically, we are using one of the HTTP methods, which is get. Get is just a getting data from this route. That's it. So technically, we pass in a route name, which in our case will be, for example, www.example.com. It is the same as this. As you can see, localhost 3030, if, if you add slash, it will still be the same. And then we pass in, let's let me move this first. And then we pass in a callback function with the parameters of request, response, and next. And then we return a JSON data format and we give it a user object, which is which the value is Arashahaya. So in a nutshell, whenever someone visits this HTTP route, it will simply return a JSON data. In this video, we learn on how to run our first server and as well as our first HTTP route. In the next video, we will set up our Cloud MongoDB account. I'll see you guys in the next video. Hello guys, welcome back. In this video, we will learn on how to set up our MongoDB Cloud Database. 
We don't need to set up MongoDB on our local machine. It will take us a lot of time. So instead, we use a cloud MongoDB database. So if you haven't signed up, go ahead and sign up. It is on mlab.com. So I already signed up, so I'm going to log in. And I'm going to enter my username, which would be alpha coder. Log in. And now I'm going to save this and I'm going to create a new database. All right. Click this one. Create new. And you have a choice. Amazon Web Services, Google Cloud Platform, or Microsoft Azure. I'm going to choose Amazon and then Sandbox. And then I'm going to click continue. Choose, you know, I'm going to choose US East. And I'm going to continue again. I'm going to give it a name, uh, Amazono Web Application continue submit order it'll take some time all right now success so now you want to click your Amazon web application it's a sandbox is free don't worry and you want to click users tab and then you want to add database and you want to give a name for me I'm gonna type my name because it's awesome Arash password will be ABC123 ABC123 and I'm gonna create you have to create a user for this database so we have it already so now later on we can just copy this link now we have already have a database we just copy this thing and we're gonna paste it on our node.js application so that's it and i'll see you guys in the next video in this video we will set up our configuration and we will organize our database link our port number and finally our secret key so let's go ahead and do that so let's go back to our Visual Studio and you want to create a new file and give it a name config.js. So config.js. And write the code right now. Database link port number. Port number will be secret. And then we'll give it our rush. Save this. So we're gonna go back to M Lab, and you want to copy this entire thing. Copy it. Go back to your Visual Studio, and you want to paste it here. And let's you know make it bigger and delete this. Rush. And the pass would be ABC one two three. And the port number would be thirty thirty. Save this. Module to export is a mean of exporting this entire file so that other file could use it. So let's give it a try. So let's go to server.js and write it up here. Cons config equals require config. So this is how we actually require or import a local file. So since config is under server dot you know server folder, so we just do dot slash config. So let's say if it's in under not module then you want to do not a modules config so now you know we want to change this to config dot port okay and you want to remove this and you want to class config dot port so right now we haven't saved this file yet so let's go to our terminal and note this and now magic happens on port 3030. So let's go ahead and change this to okay. Uh, port awesome. Save this. It's still gonna be the same. Magic happens on port awesome 3030. So we managed to export the port number and you know we managed to export the entire thing. So the next thing we want to do is we want to set up the database. Since we already import the mongoose dependency, now we can let our express application communicates directly to use MongoDB database. So let's go to server.js and right below here, we're going to type in mongoose.connect. And then again, since we already put it in config.js, the link, so we can, oops, so we can just go back here and we can type in config.database and you want to type in callback. 
is error console log error if there's no error console log connected to the database save this and let's go to our terminal and boom connected to the database mongoose.connect is a function to communicate directly to mongodb database in our case we are communicating with the cloud mongodb database and then we pass in a callback function or we call it arrow function and then if there's an error you want to log the error else you want to show connected to the database if you are at this stage meaning we are success we already successfully connected to the database in this video we learn on how to organize our database link port number secret key and finally we manage to you know connect our node.js to the mongodb database in the next section adam peterson will walk you guys through the angular part he will set up the angular and so on he is an awesome instructor and you guys will love them i'll see you guys in the next section later on bye we forgot to add something really important it is a middleware so this middleware will help the front end to communicate with the server side because server side and the front end are two separate things are two separate port for example the server side have port 3000 while the front end has maybe port 4200 so in order for the front end to communicate smoothly to the front to the back end we need to add a middleware called course course stands for cross origin resource sharing it is something that is declared by the w3c on communication between different domains by course communications between the same domain will be allowed the users and the communication that are cross originated will be restricted to a few techniques we can see this when we are talking to apis mostly the rest api will may give us an error this is because the server and the client sites are on different domains and the communication between them are restricted by course rule. So in order for us to make front end and the back end communicate smoothly, we need to add this additional middleware. So let's go ahead and do that. So let's go to PowerShell and do npm install course dash dash save. So now we have finished install. Let's go back to our server.js and let's require a file over here. Cons course equals to require course. And then I'm gonna do app.use course. And that's about it. Once we added this, then we're not gonna receive any error from the front end. Whenever you Try to make an api call to the server you will never have like an area like you know course request problem and so on so hopefully you guys enjoy this this video and you know i'll see you guys in the next couple of sections bye